Do you believe there are ghosts and demons among us? Supernatural spirits whose presence can only be sensed by the Diviners. Evie O'Neill is what the jazz babies call a real Sheba. With her bobbed hair, patterned stockings, and love of the nightlife, she's the sort of modern girl who ends up in the gossip columns or the police blotter. But is our fearless flapper also hiding a secret? For Evie's latest spot of trouble has gotten her banished from her hometown in Ohio all the way to New York City to live with her Uncle Will, the proprietor of the Museum of American Folklore, Superstition, and the Occult. That's the Museum of Creepy Crawlies to you and me. Will Manhattan help her Charleston away her cares? Or will it lead her further into danger? Hello? Anybody home? <whistles> Holy smokes, get a load of this place. Grigri Bag and Voodoo Doll, New Orleans, Louisiana. Diary of Mercy Proud, Salem Witch. They hanged her. <gasps> she was only 17. <sighs> you must be Evie. Sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. I'm Jericho, your Uncle Will's assistant. He's teaching, but he'll be with you shortly. Why did they hang her? What did she do, turn the wine back into water? She was different. That was her sin. So, what do you think of the museum? I think you should fire your decorator. Say, it was an awfully long trip. You got a little giggle water on you? A little what? You know, coffin varnish? Panther sweat? Hooch? Gin? No. I don't drink. Gee, you must get awful thirsty. <laughs> well, tell me about the museum. The museum was constructed by Cornelius Rathbone, who amassed his fortune building railroads. Lucky for him. Exactly. And how did he know the Age of Steel was coming? Wait, don't tell me. He read it in the Encyclopedia Britannica. He claimed he knew because of the prophetic visions of his sister, Liberty Ann. Bad luck for the Encyclopedia. When Cornelius and Liberty Ann were young, they spent hours in the woods playing games. One day, Liberty Ann went into the woods and was lost for two full days. When she emerged, she claimed she had met a man there whose coat opened to show the wonders and frights of the world. She fell ill with a fever. The doctor was sent for, but there was nothing he could do. What happened? For the next month, she lay in a dream trance, spouting prophecy which her worried brother transcribed in his diary. These prophecies were astonishing in their accuracy. She predicted the Emancipation Proclamation, the invention of the automobile and the aeroplane, and the onset of the Great War. She even warned of an eventual stock market collapse. Clearly she couldn't see everything. That will never happen. Liberty Ann died a month to the day after she emerged from the woods. Toward the end, her prophecies became quite dark. She talked of a coming storm, a treacherous time when the diviners would be needed. Diviners? That was her name for people with powers like hers. I see. And are there any of these diviners left? Do you know any? Not personally, no. Why do you ask? Oh, <laughs> no reason. And what about you? Do you believe there are ghosts and demons and diviners among us? There's no such thing as ghosts. But don't tell your uncle that. <laughs> And so, another day dawns in the city of dreams. But what nightmares are waking from slumber? Join us here next week on your radio dial for another thrilling episode of The Diviners.